So I'm Sasha, I'm the second year PhD student in the School of Education. And to tell you, uh, today I would like to talk to you about the parenting while uh, being international PhD student. And especially uh, uh, the part regarding the pregnancy and the labor and so on. So, um, okay. So why do we talk about international PhD parenting? So I guess most of you, if not all, are PhD students. Many of you are international ones. There are some domestic ones. And the international PhD studentship on its own, it's already quite a challenging experience. You leave your home uh, to a new environment. You need to get some new scholarly practices and so on. And then, as you might guess, there is a third cohort of people, which are parents. And I would name them as a... Uh, as especially young parents, uh, you know, sometimes you may think about them as as, as students who, who are meeting a deadline. They are sleep deprived, they are tired, uh, they are trying to do stuff which they don't know, but they still do it. Uh, and then in the middle, uh, it's you. Uh, so uh, I guess... Um... Okay. Uh, so yeah, the, the, in the middle, uh, it's you, I guess, this melting emoji uh, pretty much uh, indicates my state of mind where, in, my, in the first months after the labor. So the reason why we focus here is because I guess this cohort in the very middle is a very marginalized group. And the information you may find on the University of, Web, uh, University of Glasgow website is very limited. It's something is missing, uh, all is well hidden. And if you just Google stuff or try to search on the, on the site, you will notice that most of the things are for researchers and for the staff and less for the students, while there is something that I will talk about. And secondly, well, no, it, nobody teaches you how to parent and especially balance it with the PhD life. Uh, so, yes, yeah, small disclaimer, uh, this is a story about me, my partner and the baby, which is not necessarily representative and, you know, in, like in a qualitative research, it doesn't, it should not be one. Uh, it's about showing that the reality can, can be different, but you might find some lessons useful, even if you're not planning to have kids. And this is not about balancing toddler kids, because there's going to be a talk at the end of the day, though I don't know what is going to be about for sure. Uh, and yes, if you're wondering why would you ever have a child, the short answer is because of life, the long one I'm going to talk about. But yes, so having a child doesn't give your child uh, a citizenship straight away. Um, so I would love to, you to meet uh, my spouse, my partner, my wife, my love, uh, Farida. She studied uh, in Leeds uh, roughly eight years ago. And we came to Glasgow last, uh, last September. We were fleeing from the mobilization in Russia, so we had to leave very in a rush. Uh, and even though I've been studying in University of Glasgow uh, before, uh, in during my master's, she arrived here and she knew no one. So for her, it was a very challenging experience uh, on its own. And uh, as I guess uh, right now, <laughs> the, the photo in the middle is pretty much what we've been going through uh, in October, but one year ago, like trying to look for, uh, find a flat or, uh, you know, buying some furniture and so on. I guess most of you are going through this. And we came when we were two months. And then eventually we get different, different experiences uh, all around this year. And of course, you can imagine how tiring it was for Freda. So I think this top right corner is about something like month eight or so. So there are several stages in this, which, well, they are self-explanatory, but there are some things to have in mind. And I think the biggest piece of advice I'll give you is to build a safety net, regardless if you're planning to become a parent or not. Safety net is everything. It's your support network. And these can be the extended family members, which I put in the number one. In our case, it, it wasn't, unfortunately, we were not fortunate enough because to, to, due to different reasons, our parents couldn't come to us during the pregnancy and during the labor and after the labor. And it's, well, it's complicated. Uh, so that's why we relied on different circles. For example, our friends in UK or cult cultural circle, uh, like the people who speak the same language, share the same culture or traditions. Um, but in my case, I think I relied mostly on my PhD peers, which was my cohort of international PhD students, and especially the ones with children waiting for one or at least good with them. And I cannot say how uh, thankful I am and proud to be in, in, in like a part of, of this group. It's rather small, uh, but it's very supportive. Uh, they bring us lunch boxes during the pregnancy and after the birth, so indeed all other wonderful things. 
other th other people to have in mind are your supervisors. I'm also thankful for my for my supervisors being so um supportive they are all both of them are parents surprisingly my supervisor also had a child during her uh, phd but though it was in the last year but you can imagine <laughs> how hard uh, it can be indeed um then there are a, a couple of other services like the different chats and groups you may find in whatsapp in telegram or other messengers or facebook uh, there is also a peanut app, which is like a Tinder for women to connect, uh, like in different st the stages of life, like pregnancy, motherhood, career transitions, and so on. And there are some University of Glasgow services I'll click, I'll, I'll briefly uh, talk about. So University of Glasgow, we have well-being services. Um, the research development team can correct me if they still have a parenting and academia session. I attended this one last year. It was it was nice. Uh, I cannot say it was over really great. But it was good. Uh, but something that really worked for me was the student one-to-one -one counseling services because they really took a lot of psychological pressure which I had uh, on myself in this situation. Uh, there is also the international student team that most of you might know, and they actually have an event this Friday uh, at ten, um, and they are going. They are inviting the family. So write, uh, e email them on on this address. I'm going to share it later on. <clears throat> To become a part of this network they organize in events rarely but they are quite neat so i really encourage you to attend them some schools <clears throat> for example school of education also have support officers um your graduate school can also give you some guidance on the policies which um, they have regarding the uh, like maternity or paternity leave um, and there are also a couple of other things uh, which i'm not uh, going to go through like the study lounge or facebook group which are not not really active. So the next stage is getting educated. Uh, what we did is we asked midwives, or in case you can afford a doula, we attended anti-natal classes by NHS, which were both live and online. Um, we got some breastfeeding support. This is easily Googleable. We also attended this positive birth uh, e-course, um, which I'm going to give a link to. It's not necessarily this one, but this is like a application of positive psychology but to the uh, to the labor and the whole pregnancy uh, process because it really shifts your attitude to the whole idea of birth so if you might if you are scared before you might be way less scared afterwards uh, Farida also went to pregnancy yoga to stretch the muscles and also got to know other moms and uh, as cheesy as it sounds but this uh, wonderful NHS book register the baby was actually a treasure of uh, useful and practical advice so some things to plan in advance. I think the most important here is your leave. So I'm going to speak for myself as in UK, you can get a two paid weeks of paternity leave. And this works in case you are on the UKRI level stipend. For maternity, it works differently. And I have a slide for that, but I'm, uh, you will get this information anyway. And remember that you as a student have eight weeks uh, of uh, annual leave. At least you should, uh, but correct me if I'm wrong. And as an international student, you have visa uh, restrictions that if you are leaving UK for more than 60 days, you have to suspend your studies. So this is something to uh, remember about. Remember to sort sort out your annual progress review. Luckily enough, I was, uh, I think, in the first week of delivering uh, the AP, uh, APR, uh, and it happened, I think, maybe two weeks before the birth uh, came in. Uh, plan carefully your finances and start saving. You will need a lot of, of funds to um, support your family and especially when you'll be paying for nurseries and go and check them already now while you're pregnant. Um, and remember that babies grow super fast. So that's why you will need uh, different uh, sources of clothes and stuff. So one thing I'll just mention is the Scottish Baby Box, which is an initiative from the Scottish government to support any child regardless of immigration status they give a box with different baby stuff and so on it's it's nice it's not insanely helpful but it's nice and it's useful to some extent um this is just a chart which you will see later on it tells um uh let's say the timelines and the things you're entitled to as as a mother and well the first weeks when the child is born just appreciate this moment you will have so much time for your research but things like having a child, this comes and goes. And and it may be a once in a lifetime uh, opportunity. So yeah, this is a picture from, I think on the second day uh, after the baby was born. 
So really be supportive to your partner, to your baby. Just be in this moment, take a leave. But I took eight weeks of leave, including the parental leave. Uh, <clears throat> and it worked well, quite well, I'd say. Uh, there is a nice rule that I was taught by one of the friends is that whenever baby sleeps, mother should sleep. Sleep is a very big thing. Like I was uh, waking up at 4.30 a.m. like Anmar, but for slightly different reasons. But still sleep is ultimately important here. Uh, and yeah, cherish these moments. They go very fast and you just need to appreciate them. Uh, in the later stages, um, use and expand the safety net. Um, like for example, what we did, we invited friends and family members home. Well, we invited them and eventually they didn't come, but a lot of friends uh, with some um, regularity, they came to our house, they brought some food, they did some chores. So it was very helpful. So really use your safety net. Uh, you can also attend some events uh, from the organized by the libraries or some community centers like bookbuck or uh, picnics or baby sensory and so on. And then most importantly, talk with your partner because uh, while uh, you are three already, well, in our case, we were three, you might be more. Um, sometimes you forget that you were two at some point and there are, there are me times and there are us times which needs to be acknowledged and dedicated to. Um, and yeah, this is going to be a huge change of your life. Everything is going to be changed, literally speaking. So be flexible, be open, and embrace the change. I don't have any other piece of advice in this regard. And yeah, meet Alan, meet uh, the sweet uh, boy that was born this April. I think the picture in the middle sort of encapsulates the, <laughs> the, the, my, my mood and mental health state um, in the first month when I was attending some online events, but also babysitting uh, and so on. Um, and yeah, in the picture in the top right corner, this is my brother coming to help us out with a child. Uh, he took a child with a pram for two hours and we went to the cinema first time in a half a year. So that was lovely. Um, yeah, so long story short, or to sum up, build and use your safety net, reach out for support. And I really mean it. Educate yourself in pregnancy, labor, and care. This is going to be a huge time for change. So discuss, be flexible, be open, and find a balance that works for you. And well, just to reassure you, everything will be all right. Um, yeah, good luck with uh, with this encounter. It's very hard, but well, it's possible. Even without the, with the support of family members, I still believe it's it's a very rewarding experience and. It's definitely not an excuse that you're having a, a, a PhD studentship not have a child, but you can argue with me, of course.